Hi hey everyone, in this video we're going to be talking about what the Prandtl number is. We'll talk about what this number represents and present a few examples where this number could be beneficial to you. The Prandtl number is often represented by PR or sometimes as an N with a subscript PR. The Prandtl number is a dimensionless number, meaning it has no units, but what does that even mean? While dimensionless numbers in transport phenomena and engineering as a whole provide us with a convenient way to characterize problems when there are several coupled transport mechanics. The Prandtl number represents the ratio of the momentum diffusivity to the thermal diffusivity. Another way to state this is that we are comparing the relative size of the hydrodynamic boundary layer and that of the thermal boundary layer. Visually, if we have an incoming stream hitting a flat plate, this is what we get for various Prandtl numbers. If you are unsure of what boundary layers are, I will leave a link in the description below to aid your understanding. The Prandtl number is a parameter specific to a fluid and has nothing to do with the matter that it is interacting with. However, it does fluctuate with the fluid's temperature and pressure. As you can see, at higher Prandtl numbers, we have greater momentum transfer than thermal transfer, and at low Prandtl numbers, we have greater thermal transfer than momentum transfer. In summary, we use the Prandtl number to characterize a fluid's transport mechanics meaning how it will behave when we have both momentum and thermal transfer present. We can represent this mathematically as a thermal diffusivity, which is simply a thermal conductivity of the fluid, over its specific heat capacity times its density, and as you can see here, the density terms cancel out when divided by the mass diffusivity. To better understand what this actually means, let's take a practical example in which we use the Prandtl number. Let's imagine two scenarios. Firstly, we have glycerin with a Prandtl number of 2,455, flowing through a heated cylinder. And in the second scenario, we have air with a Prandtl number of 0 0.7 through a heated cylinder. Let's say both fluids are entering at 0 degrees, and our heated cylinder is at 75 degrees Celsius. Knowing what we just discussed about the Prandtl number, what do you think will happen in both these scenarios? Well, let's look at our glycerin example first. This is a high Prandtl number which tells us that the diffusivity of the momentum is going to dominate the diffusivity of the thermal transfer. Therefore, we are going to see the thermal boundary layer develop much slower than the momentum boundary layer. And what this means is that somewhere down the pipe, we will have a fully developed velocity profile much quicker than a temperature profile. So if you can imagine at point one, let's say 50 centimeters into our pipe, the velocity profile is fully developed. And it is not until point two, much further down the pipe, will our temperature profile stop changing. And this will be when the temperature of the glycerin is the same temperature as the walls. Now, looking at our second example, what do you think is going to happen? Well, now since we have the Prandtl number less than one, our temperature profile will actually develop quicker than our velocity profile. So the temperature of our fluid will become approximately uniform before our fluid velocity profile fully develops. To make sure this fully registers with you, let's look at the Prandtl numbers formula for these fluids. The viscosity of glycerin is about 950 centipoise. Its specific heat is roughly 2.4 and its thermal conductivity is about 0.28, whereas air has the following properties. As you can see here, air is much, much less viscous than the glycerin, and this allows for easy mixing thus allowing it to transfer the energy from the walls of the cylinder much quicker than in the glycerin. Additionally, air will have a lower specific heat, meaning it takes less energy to heat it up. And lastly, the thermal conductivity of the air isn't all that much different than glycerin's. Lastly, let's finish this up by talking about some typical ranges for real Prandtl numbers. As I talked about earlier, it is often the case that fluids with lesser viscosities, so gases, have a lower Prandtl number around 0.6 to 1. Just to reiterate, this means that the molecular diffusion of momentum is equal to that of the molecular diffusion of thermal energy. On the other end of the spectrum, highly viscous liquids have a higher Prandtl number, like the glycerin we talked about earlier. And some oils even have Prandtl numbers nearing 100,000. Thank you for checking out this video and I hope it helped your understanding about what the Prandtl number is and why it is useful in the study of transport phenomena. If you enjoyed, please like and subscribe to support the channel. However, if you have any comments, questions, or concerns about the information I provided in this video, please leave a comment down below and I will do my best to address your concerns.